So just to preface before we get into this video, please keep in mind that I was very critical in the beginning. This is a $70 instrument, uh, but the the type of video this is supposed to be, it's supposed to be critical, I think. So I'm going to be walking you through and showing you uh, what you can expect if you're planning on picking up one of these yourself. What are some of the things you can improve on the instrument? Um, what I found to be kind of unusable. Um, the great thing about this is that all the parts work. The truss rod, the saddles, everything. So it's a matter of setting it up, spending a little bit of time yourself and getting this really playing the way you want it. As you heard, I mean, it sounds like a fantastic guitar so far. Further on in the video, I'll have more sound demos. So if you just want to skip through all the talking, there's going to be a link in the description for that timestamp. If you all have any questions at any point, uh, leave them in the comments, and I'll get back to them as fast as I can. If you enjoy the video, make sure you hit the like button at some point. I appreciate it. It helps me out a little bit. Maybe subscribe to the channel as well. This is a $70 guitar. This is the GST-3 by Glary Musical Instrument Company. It's a Strat style electric. And uh, what I'm going to be doing today is opening up the box and showing you kind of my own impression of, of what this guitar is straight out of the box. Uh, and if it's something that's suitable for a beginner or if it's someone uh, that wants to learn a little bit about guitar setup and repair, you might have seen my videos recently on that. Or is this something that's totally giggable? We're going to open it up and we're going to see what's happening with this thing. You might notice that there's some damage on the box, so another reason I wanted to film the unboxing is just in case we do have any damage to the instrument. I should note that, uh, personally in my opinion, this should have been shipped uh, with a protective box. It should have been double boxed, as people like to call it. Um, but for $70, I think they're trying to cut cost in any way they can. If it shows up damaged, hopefully uh, that They'll, they'll fix that for you, they'll remedy that, or the shipping company will take ownership. All right, uh, so the first thing I see when I open the box is the, uh, the sleeve that comes for the guitar. By no means is it a soft shell case, or it doesn't have any stability. It's just one of these things, it's vinyl. Uh, cut and sewn in the shape of a guitar and it'll keep scratches off of it. It's got a pocket in front and backpack straps. Uh, then we've got a, a guitar cable, just a standard TS, looks to be about 10 feet, and a vibrato arm. Guitar strap with two guitar picks in it. And finally the guitar amid lots of styrofoam. As a very preliminary look at the instrument, I'm noticing a few things. Uh, number one, the nut is a little bit sharp. That's something you can easily take down with a file, uh, so I'm going to do that later. I can tell that the frets are a little bit sharp, as is to be expected. Um, with more affordable guitars, it takes a lot of labor to make sure to go through and shave the corners of each fret. Uh, so it's understandable that there's a little bit of roughness there. That's something you can fix as well, uh, but you will need to be very careful with it. Is it, it is a time-consuming process and you're going to need some special tools for that. Um, the frets, they don't hang over the edge of the fretboard, which is more than I can say about my, my Gibson SG that I got last year. Something else I'm noticing just right off the bat, and actually it's, it was the same with the Gibson, <laughs> funny enough, uh, but the, the saddles here, there was no attempt made to correctly intonate these. And when you've set the intonation before, uh, you just know just by eyeballing it that when they're straight across, lined up perfectly like that, there's no way it's going to be in tune. Um, and this is something that's pretty easy to fix if you know what you're doing. It's a skill that takes a little bit of time to learn, but by no means is it a deal breaker, especially with an instrument this cheap. Um, I'm also noting that the, the action is pretty high on it right now, but that's another easy fix. And of course, that's something that is out of their control when they ship it all the way from China. I think that's where the postage was marked from, and it arrives here near Pittsburgh. Uh, obviously, the climate's going to be pretty different with humidity and temperature and everything. So that's something you can expect to be out, is the action. At this moment, I'm going to take you through and just show you the very basic sounds of this guitar. Uh, again, I haven't done any work to it yet, so it's still got the 9-gauge strings on, and I've had a very hard time getting it to stay in tune. Uh, but I'm just going to take you through and show you the basic sounds. Later on, we're going to get to a much more well-done demo once I've set this guitar up as best I can. Um, so stay tuned for that. Here's the neck position. <laughs> position four. The 
middle pickup. Position two. And the bridge. Uh, so, and by the way, the tone uh, functions as a normal strat would. First tone is controlling the neck pickup. Second tone is controlling just the middle pickup. And the bridge doesn't have a tone, as most strats normally are. Um, so, listening to this thing, it does, it sounds like a Stratocaster, which is a very good thing you can say, I think, for a $70 guitar-shaped object. Um, sometimes when you pick up a really bad guitar, it, it just sounds like crap. I like that this has an actual Strat tone to it, and I think we can go somewhere with this. So at this point, I'm going to take it over my bench, and I'm going to, I'm going to, I think I'm going to put tens on it, something that I'm more used to on a Strat-style guitar, and I'm going to intonate it, do some filing as we need, shave off kind of some of the rough points. I've found a rough point on the back of the neck that I'm going to address as well. And you can just do that with steel wool, by the way. It's pretty easy. So once I've got this guitar set up as best as I honestly can, I'm going to get back there and mic up that amp, and we'll do a much more in-depth demo. If you guys are interested in learning a little bit about easy guitar setup repair techniques that you can do yourself, maybe check out this video that I filmed recently. Keep watching. If you think you hate this guitar already, trust me, it does turn out alright. Um, and at this point I wanted to thank Larry for sending me the instrument. I, my opinion wasn't influenced by them sending the instrument. As you can see, I've been very critical of it so far. Uh, but stay tuned, I'll show you the work that you need to do to get this playing how I have it now. The first thing I want to do after I take the strings off is I want to remove the neck and just see how tight the neck pocket is in there. If you've got a solid connection, it's going to be a decent instrument. Um, if there's a lot of room in there, then there's, a, there's really no amount of tightening that the, the bolts can do. And this is something that might vary instrument to instrument, so I'm not sure if other demos have done this yet. Uh, but just take this for what it is, it's one example of, of one instrument. And then I'm also going to have a look inside the pickup cavity and just see what the electronics look like, how the soldering is, and all the wire management. I'm going to be using one of these just to do most of the work here. And this is just a, uh, a very simple pocket tool, and everything on it is guitar-sized. I got one of these at a music store randomly a couple of years ago, and it's become something that I keep in my case all the time. So I'll leave a link to this in the description if this sounds like something that might be useful to you. Really? Alright, so the actual first thing I'm going to have to do to get this thing off is take the neck off because the pick guard runs underneath the fingerboard a little bit. Didn't notice that before. For this one I'll just be using a, a bigger screwdriver. So when I took the neck off I noticed how easy it was. I mean it should almost be difficult to separate the neck from the body. That's how you know you have a tight connection and that there's a lot of transfer between the vibrations uh, of the strings where they're happening at the body and where they're happening at the other end of the neck. If you've got a good connection there the instrument's going to resonate better and again this is this is a criticism of a seventy dollar guitar so don't take this as something that's a deal breaker you know. I mean when guitars are made fast and inexpensive this is something you can expect I think. So here's the inside of the control cavity, and I inspected all the solder joints, nothing weird. There's, a, there's, I mean, a little bit of excess wiring that's not terrible. The capacitors was the only weird thing that I noticed. Um, I mean, it's the same thing. You just have two potentiometers here wired with the capacitors, and on this one, it's wired and it's kind of folded to the outside. On this one, it's folded in between the lug and the base. Just odd that they wouldn't do it the same way, I think. And then the pickups, the only thing I could notice was that the magnets on the back aren't exactly centered. But again, this is just like, at $70, this is just some very minor details that I'm nitpicking. So I've got the guitar back together, obviously. Um, 
and I went and did as much as I could with the tuners. So I tightened down this nut here. On the other side there's a Phillips head screw uh, that was a bit loose so that could have been causing some wiggle with the tuner. Sometimes the tuner can actually spin in the socket. So if you get this tight and the Phillips head on the back tight, you won't have an issue with that piece moving. This bit does have a Phillips head screw on it, on the actual tuning head, on the tuning key. And what that controls is the tension, how tight this mechanism feels. Uh, so I loosened it and gave it a couple rotations on all of them and then tightened it back down so they're all kind of the same tension. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix the nut as best I can. There's some hard places here and what I'm using for that is literally just a nail file. So I'm going to take the rough edges off the sides of it and as I move up to tens I might have to do a little bit of filing in here so that the wound strings don't get stuck as they pass through. So anyway we're going to see if we still experience any of those tuning issues after I've done these quick little fixes. With the strings on, the nut fixed, and the tuners tightened as much as they can be, uh, the next thing to do is to tune it up to pitch, and then we're going to check the neck relief. So we'll look down the end of it, make sure it's as straight as it can be, check the action a little bit, and that'll be a good starting point to start adjusting the actual action by the saddles down here, and then also adjust the intonation. So as I tuned the guitar up to pitch, I noticed the bridge plate was pulling away more than I wanted it to. I've played and set up strats before uh, floating, but I just don't prefer it. I like the bridge plate to sit down flat against it, and especially if the block inside can touch the body of the guitar, I think it gives it a little bit more resonance, and I like that. Uh, so with 10 gauge strings and three springs that come with it, your claw is going to be maxed out as far as it can go in order to get the bridge plate flat. So I would recommend either finding two more strings or just getting new springs entirely maybe uh, that have more tension. I have the feeling these might be a little bit weak. Um, so just a forewarning if you're looking to go heavier than 10 gauge strings and you want this to sit flat. So now with the neck straight and the strings at full tension, I'm going to set the action down here so we can get consistent height across all these strings. And what you need to do this uh, on a Strat style guitar is a little radius gauge. You can make them yourself. I spoke about this a little bit in a video a couple weeks ago that I filmed on the ship. Uh, basically, you can see the curve down here. This is how you're going to measure to make sure all your strings are at the right height. They should all be touching this gauge. So by now I've set the truss rod and the action down here. This guitar is playing a lot better and sounding a lot better than it was when it came. <laughs> playing in tune pretty well even though I haven't actually intonated it yet. Uh, maybe I won't have to do much adjustment down there after all. Uh, the tuning pegs still feel like they have positions that they like to sit at and some positions that they don't like to sit at, although it's definitely an improvement from before. Whatever I did, I think tightening these parts up here, this nut, really made a difference. I could barely get any of the open chords to play in tune. If I got one in tune, the others wouldn't be in tune. Um, right now, it's sounding a lot better already, so I'm going to keep working at it. Now, the frets, there's definitely some uneven frets. You can hear it's choking out as I get up here, even though the neck is straight. And I've got the action set as best I can, but I can tell that there's definitely some dead spots. And uh, if you're someone that wants to learn about fret crowning, this could be a good opportunity to learn a little bit about that. Get the tools yourself and learn some technique. When I set the intonation, I always make sure that the pickups are lowered as far as they can go pretty much. So that you don't have any issues of the magnetic pull of the pickups affecting how the strings are vibrating. Uh, sometimes if the pickups are too close, they can pull the strings out of tune, and the further you get up the fretboard, pressing further frets, it's going to lower the string into a range that the pickup's actually pulling it out of tune and making it go funky. So I lower them down before I adjust the intonation. When that's set, the final step to setting up the guitar is raising these back up to an ideal point uh, where they're, they're loud and they're present, but they're not pulling the strings out of tune. So I'll start with the neck usually and then do the middle. Finally, the bridge. So 
So I've got the Supra right now mic'd up with a Sennheiser 609 and an MXL V250 going into Focusrite. Uh, it's an interface. And then finally Logic, where I'm just recording everything. I'm going to mix it 50-50, no compression or anything extra in here. We're going to get some dry samples, uh, then do some overdrive, maybe add some delay in there just for context. And then we're going to do everything and try it through this Blues Deluxe behind me. Uh, it's Blues Deluxe reissue. There's a, some modifications to it, but it's a very common amp that I think will give a good representation of what you can expect out of this guitar. Now that we're mic'd up properly, let's run through all the positions. <laughs> And again, with just a little bit of overdrive, this is a Klon pedal, Klon style circuit. Let's add in some fuzz. This is the Caroline Guitar Effects Company, Shigeharu. So maybe don't use the tremolo. Thank mm -hmm. you. 